Hello students, welcome to the English class again. Uh, as we were explaining enemy part wise for the last few days, let us again continue with our next uh, uh, part explanation. Okay. Uh, in my last video, I have explained till anything less than that is murder. And so today we will start from it is not quite at the kidney, my friend. Right. So let's continue. It is not quite at the kidney, my friend, Sadao murmured. It was his habit to murmur to the patient when he forgot himself in an operation. My friend, he always called his patients, and so now he did, forgetting that, his, that this was his enemy. Sadao spoke to the injured man. He said that the bullet had just missed his kidney. When Sadao would get engro uh, engrossed in the operation, he would uh, start talking to the patient. He addressed uh, the patient as my friend. He called the injured man also my friend. He forgot that this man was not a friend but an enemy. Then quickly, with the cleanest and most precise of incision, the bullet was out. The man quivered, but he was still unconscious. Nevertheless, he muttered a few English words. Guts. He muttered, choking. They got my guts. Sadao, Hana cried sharply. Hush. Sadao said. The man sank again into silence, so profound that Sadao took up his wrist, hating the touch of it. Yes, there was still a pulse, so faint, so feeble, but enough, if he wanted the man to leave, to give hope. But certainly I do not want this man to leave, he thought. No more anesthetic, he told Hana. What happened next is that Sadao was very quick. He made a few surgical cuts on the body and removed the bullet. The man trembled in pain uh, but remained unconscious. He spoke a few words in English which were an expression of the pain that he was experiencing. The man uh, sank again into silence. Now what did the man say? The man said guts. Now what is the meaning of this term guts? Okay, guts means it's a kind of informal word, okay, uh, to show the bravery and uh, determination, okay. So, uh, the man said that they got my guts. They got my guts, of course, it shows that that uh, this uh, the Japanese army, uh, the man was, uh, was relieving that particular fact that he was being captured by the Japanese army, okay. So, he was going on saying that they got my, got my guts, means those Japanese army had got my guts. Uh, got me okay so um, the he went on saying so and hana was really uh, anxious so hana said um, sadao okay because uh, he she was uh, quite uh, um, uh, she was quite frightened the injured man uh, choked and said guts they got my guts he meant that he was brave and courageous and the japanese army would have a tough time uh, while punishing him upon hearing him hana cried out to sadao Sadao hushed her to keep quiet. Um, the man became quiet, uh, so quiet that Sadao held his wrist to check his heartbeat. He was checking if the man was still alive. His pulse was there, although it was very weak. Sadao thought that uh, it was enough for a person who had a desire to leave. There was still hope that the man would survive. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, he does not want... Okay, Sadao was sure that he did not want the man to leave, right? So he turned to Hana and told that uh, no more anesthetic should be provided, okay? He turned as swiftly as though he had never pa uh, paused from and from his medicines, he chose a small vial and from it filled a hypodermic and thrust it into the patient's left arm. Then putting down the needle, he took the man's wrist again. The pulse under his fingers fluttered once or twice and then grew stronger. This man will leave in spite of all, he said to Hana and sighed. Um, Sadao then uh, uh, turned quickly, uh, stopped Hana from means giving any more anesthetic. He turned quickly and chose a small vial. Vial means what? What is the meaning of this term? Uh, vial, if you can see, a small vial. Vial means... It's a small container uh, which is uh, made of glass, okay, used especially for holding liquid medicines, okay. And what is the meaning of this term hypodermic? Hypodermic means needle, 
सिरिंज ओके विच वी यूज इन द इंजेक्शन राइट सो सदाउ स्टॉप थाना फ्रॉम गिविंग एनी मोर एनस्थेटिक ही टर्न क्विकली एंड देन चोज अ स्मॉल बॉटल राइट फ्रॉम द मेडिसिन ही फील्ड अ सिरिंज विद द मेडिसिन एंड पुस्ट द वैक्सीन इन टू द मैंस लेफ्ट आर्म सदाउ प्लेस द नीडल डाउन एंड हेल्थ द मैंस रिस्ट द पल्स शिवर्ड वंस और ट्वाइस एंड देन इम्प्रूव्ड राइट ओके This man will live in spite of all," he said to Hana, and sighed. The young man woke so weak, his blue eyes so terrified, when he perceived where he was, that Hana felt compelled to apologize. He herself served him, for none of the servants would enter the room. Okay, now Sadao took a deep breath as he told Hana that the injured man would live. Okay, now here you see here the trans uh, the transition from one part to another is very quick. The, this man would will leave in spite of all he said to Hana and Sai. Till here, what exactly happens is that the operation scene, and from here it uh, represents another day. It can be another day or it can be few hours later. Okay, it did not happen exactly after the operation. Means uh, the operation was done. Then after either few hours or maybe after a single day okay how many day or how many hours the narrator or the author did not mention over here right so uh, after the operation was over the operation was quite successful the man survived right and um, then uh, later on the man regained back his consciousness okay so um, uh, he woke up and his blue colored eyes were full of fright as he realized where he was Hana really felt sorry for him. She served him food as the servants refused to enter the room where he was kept. When he when she came in the first time, she saw him summon his small strength to be prepared for some fearful thing. Don't be afraid, she begged him softly. How come you speak English? He gasped. I was a long time in America, she replied. She saw that he wanted to reply to that, but he could not, and so she knelt and fed him gently from the porcelain spoon. He ate unwillingly, but still he ate. Right. So when uh, when she came in the first time, she saw Hana saw uh, this American to summon his uh, small strength. Summon means what? Together, okay. So when Hana met the injured man for the first time, she saw that the man was gathering strength, and uh, he was full of fear. Hana said softly to the injured man uh, that he should not be afraid. Uh, the man was astonished that she could speak English. Hana replied that she had lived in America for a long time. The man wanted to speak further, but was not able to speak. Hana fed him gently with a spoon made of porcelain. Okay, porcelain. What is pos porcelain? Here, if you can see, porcelain means uh, it's a uh, it's a ceramic. Okay, it's like a translucent ceramic. Also, sometimes we call it as a china clay. Okay, used to make for utensils, uh, pottery, etc. Right. Okay. So uh, Hana fed him very gently with a spoon made of porcelain. The man did not want to eat, but still he ate. Now you will soon be strong," she said, not liking him, and yet moved to comfort him. He did not answer. When Sadao came in the third day after the operation, he found the young man sitting up, his face bloodless with the effort. "Lie down," Sadao cried. "Do you want to die?" He forced the man down gently and strongly and examined the wound. "You may kill yourself if you do these sort of things," he scolded. "What are you going to do with me?" the boy muttered. He looked just now barely seventeen. Are you going to hand me over? For a moment, Sadao did not answer. He finished his examination and then pulled the silk quilt over the man. As Hana fed the man, she said um, that uh, soon he would become strong. Uh, she said so, despite the fact that uh, she disliked him. The man did not reply to her. Uh, then on the third day after the operation, few days have again passed by. Sadao visited the man on the third day after the operation. The young man, boy was sitting, but his face was pale and weak due to the effort that he made while sitting. Sadao screamed at him and ordered him to lie down. Uh, he said that the man would die if he stressed himself. Sadao forced him down and inspected the wound that he had operated upon. He even scolded the man that he could die if he tried to exert 
himself. The boy asked Sadao that uh, what would he do with him now? It seemed that the boy was hardly 17 years old. Before, uh, Sadao and Hana thought that the boy must not be even 25. But now after the operation was done, when the boy was now sitting up okay, by his own, uh, they understood or Sadao felt that the boy must not be even 17 years old, also, a very, very young boy. He asked Sadao that uh, would he hand him over to the Japanese army, right? Uh, Sadao did not reply instantly, right? For a moment, Sadao did not answer. He finished his examination and then pulled the silk quilt over the man. I do not know myself. What I shall do with you? He said, I ought, of course, to give you to the police. You are a prisoner of war. No, do not tell me anything. He put up his hand as he saw the young man was about to speak. Do not even tell me your name unless I ask it. So thou did not think rep uh, to reply instantly. He completed examining the boy and then put the silk quilt on him. So thou said that uh, he himself did not know what he should do with the boy. He added that he was supposed to hand him over to the police. Um, he also disclosed that he knew that the boy was a prisoner of war. As Sadao saw that the boy was about to speak, he raised his hand to indicate him not to do so. Sadao even asked him not to speak and not to tell his name also unless he asked him to do so. Right? I hope everyone have understood till this much. Let's continue. They looked at each other for a moment and then the young man closed his eyes and turned his face to the wall. Okay, he whispered, his mouth a bitter line. Outside the door, Hana was waiting for Sadao. He saw at once that she was in trouble. Sadao, Yumi tells me that the servants feel that can, they cannot stay if we hide this man here anymore, she said. She tells me that they are saying that you and I were so long in America that we have forgotten to think of our own country first. They think we like Americans. Okay. Sadao and the boy exchanged glances and then the boy closed his eyes and turned his face towards the wall. Okay, uh, He said okay in a low voice and he, as he felt a bitter by Sadao's word. Now what was happening in Sadao's household? Because initially only we have found at the beginning that Sadao's servants were unwilling to help an American inside the house. Okay, So outside the door Hana was waiting for Sadao. He saw that she was in some sort of a trouble. Okay, Hana called out Sadao. Hana said to Sadao that uh, Yumi told her that the servants would not stay with them if the American man lived there any longer. She also said that Sadao and Hana had been in America for such a long time that they had forgotten their country's priority. Uh, Yumi and the servants thought that Hana and Sadao liked Americans. Okay, It is not true, Sadao said harshly. Americans are our enemies. But I have been trained not to let a man die if I can help it. I have been trained to not to let a man die if I can help it means it shows that he is a doctor and he is a dedicated doctor. Okay, so he cannot move away from his duties. The servants cannot understand that, she said anxiously. No, he agreed. Neither seemed able to say more and somehow the household dragged on. The servants grew more watchful. Their curtsy was as careful as ever, but their eyes were cold upon the pair to whom they were hired. It is clear what our master ought to do, the old gardener said one morning. He had worked with flowers all his life and had been a specialist too in moss. For Sadao's father, he had made one of the finest moss gardens in Japan, sweeping the bright green carpet constantly so that not a leaf or a pine needle marred the velvet of its surface. My old master's son knows very well what he ought to do, he now said pinching a butt from a bush as he spoke. When the, man, when the man was so near death, why did he not let him play? No. Sadao reacted harshly. Okay, when uh, this, uh, they said that, uh, uh, when the servants said that Sadao and Hana are considering themselves as American, Sadao reacted very harshly and said that that was not true. Okay, he said that Americans were their enemies too. 
He had been trained in such a way that he could not let a man die and would help to save him in whichever way he could. That was what Sadao had done. Okay, But Hana said that the servants could not understand Sadao's predicament. Of course, that is very natural because the servants are not educated. They would not understand the vows of doctor or what a doctor needs to do. Okay, So Sadao also agreed with this. Both of them had nothing more to say. The course of the house continued, but the servants were very vigilant. Okay, They were polite but unfriendly towards their masters. It is clear that our master out, uh, uh, out to do, the old gardener said one day. So one day what happened? One morning, the old gardener said that it was obvious that their master should, uh, what their master should have done. The old gardener had worked with flowers all his life and specialized in moss. So we can understand that this old gardener um, uh, was a gardener appointed by Sadao's father. So this old gardener had seen the birth of Sadao, had seen uh, Sadao being raised and brought up. Okay, So he is the oldest servant in this household. So the old gardener had worked with flowers all his life in special and was uh, very specialized in moss planting. Okay, He had been employed by Sadao's father. <coughs> the gardener had made one of the best moss garden in Japan for Sadao's father. He would sweep the bright uh, green um, colored uh, carpet of the moss clean so that the sharp leaves of pine trees could not spoil the soft velvety surface. Okay. <clears throat> He plucked a flower bud from the bush as he said that his master's son, that is Sadao, uh, knew very well what he, he was supposed to do. He added that when the, master, when the man was almost dead, he should have left him to bleed to death. Right? Okay. That young man is so proud of his skill. That young man, who is that young man here? Of course, it means Sadao. Okay. That young man is so proud of his skill to save life that he saves any life. The cook said contemptuously. She split a fowl's neck skillfully and held a fluttering bird and let its blood flow into the roots of a wisteria vine. Blood is the best of fertilizers and the old gardener would not let her waste a drop of it. Now the cook, okay, the cook said disrespectfully that their master was so proud of his skill at saving lives that he did not bother whose life he was saving. She cut the neck of a hen, okay, here it is said that uh, split a fowl's neck, so it means a hen's neck, okay. So she cut the neck of a hen skillfully and held the bird, bird at, as it shivered. She let the blood of the hen flow into the wisteria uh, plant, okay, here if you can see, into the wisteria vine. What is the meaning of wisteria vine? It is a flower, flowering plant which is used for decoration, okay. And the old gardener had instructed the cook that blood was the best fertilizer for the plant and he did not allow her to waste a single drop of it okay now you see here this is very interesting okay when the old gardener say that the blood is the best of fertilizer he is not willing to let flow the blood he does not want the gardener does not want that blood should be wasted okay but then he wants that the man should die okay when at the beginning line what did he say when the man was so near death why did he not let him bleed okay so the gardener said that why Sadao did not allow the man to be a man to bleed away okay to die okay but then again the gardener again says that blood is uh, the best of fertilizer and it should not be wasted would not let her waste a drop of it so here we can find the irony in the gardener's comment okay it is the children of whom we must think you may say it sadly what will be their fate if their father is condemned as a traitor? So Yumi is concerned about uh, the children. She loves the children of uh, Sadao. Okay, she wondered that when they grow up, okay, they will they would be labeled as the children of a traitor. As Sadao was helping an American, all the people of Japan would consider him to be an enemy of Japan, a traitor of his country. They did not try to hide what they said from the ears of Hana as she stood arranging the day's flowers in the veranda nearby. As she knew, they spoke on purpose, that she might hear. They, uh, that they were right, she knew too, in most of her being. But there was another part of her which she herself could not understand. It was not sentimental liking of the prisoner. She had come to think of him as a prisoner. She had not liked him even yesterday when he had said in his impulsive way, Anyway, let me tell you that my name is Tom. She had only bowed her little distant bow. She said she saw hurt in his eyes, but she did not uh, wish to assuage it. 
indeed he was a great trouble in this house right okay um hana as hana stood in the veranda arranging the flowers the servants discussed the matter in her presence as they wanted her to know their views about the master hana also felt that the servants were right okay uh, but she had some feelings for the injured man which she could not also uh, analyze okay she also could not analyze that what was this feeling was about she did not like the prisoner neither uh, was she attached towards him the day before the injured man told her that his name was tom hana did not like him at that moment also she had reacted by bowing uh, her head mildly she saw that her reaction hurt the injured man but she did not want to reduce this hurt that she had caused to this to this man because the injured man was a great trouble to her his presence was a threat to hana and sada right uh, on the seventh day after that two things happened in the morning the servants left together uh sorry ex- extremely sorry i missed out uh, this particular part okay so let's continue from here as for sadao every day he examined the wound carefully the last stitches had been pulled out this morning and the young man would in a fortnight be nearly as well as ever sadao went back to his office and carefully typed a letter to the chief of police reporting the whole matter On the twenty-first day of February, an escaped a prisoner was washed up up on the shore in front of my house. So far, he typed, and then uh, he opened a secret drawer of his desk and put the unfinished report into it. Okay. Sada was performing his role perfectly. He would examine the wound every day. One morning, the last stitches were removed from the injured man's body, and he would be as well as ever in the next fifteen days. In the meantime Sada went to his office and wrote a letter to the chief of the police to report the entire matter to him because Sada and Hana had already decided that once the operation is done once the man revives back they are going to inform the police and the man should be handed over isn't it okay so sada went to the office and wrote a letter sada started his report and he wrote that on the 21st of february an escaped prisoner was washed up on the shore in front of his house So now he had just t- typed this much of the report. He opened, but then he opened the drawer of his desk and kept this unfinished report into it. On the seventh day after that, two things happened. Okay, this part is very important. Two things happened. What two things happened? Questions very often has come from this particular paragraph. So students, please read this paragraph very carefully. Okay. Now what happened on the seventh day after that? Two things happened. In the morning, the servants left together their belongings tied in large square cotton handkerchief, uh, cotton kerchiefs. That uh, when Sa- uh, Hana got up in the morning, nothing was done. The house not cleaned and the food not prepared, and she knew what it meant. She was dismayed and even terrified, but her pride as a mistress would not allow her to show it. instead she inclined her head gracefully when they appeared before her in the kitchen and she paid them off and thanked them for all that they had done for her they were crying but she did not cry the cook and the gardener had served sada since he was a little boy in his father's house and yumi cried because of the children she was so grieving that after she had gone she ran back to hana Uh, on the seventh day after the that two thing happened, the servants of the house left in the morning. They had tied their belongings in a huge piece of cloth. If you see here, it is given over here. That is a kerchief. Okay, here it is given the large square cotton kerchief. Kerchief means what? It's a, a square piece of cloth. Okay, so uh, what happened? They have already packed their belongings into a large piece of cloth. Now, when Hana got up in the morning, she saw that the work had not been done. The house was dirty, and the food was not even cooked. She realized that the servants were up to something. Okay, and she was shocked and horrified when she came to know that the servants were leaving. Hana did not show her feelings to the servants. She was very proud mistress. Okay, instead she remained calm and maintained her grace as the lady of the house. 
She paid the servants and thanked them for their services. As the servants had not, had been working there for many years, they were crying, but Hana did not cry. Uh, we can see here that the cook and the gardener was very uh, when Sada was very small. Okay, they had seen Sada grow up. Okay, so they were the very old servants in the house. Okay, they had been employed by Sada's father and uh, had served Sada since his childhood. And Yumi was crying because she would miss the children. She was so sad that she ran up to Hana after she uh, had left. Right. If the baby misses me too much tonight, send for me. I am going to my own house and you know where it is. Okay. Thank you, Hana said smiling. But she told herself she would not send for Yumi. However, the baby cried. Uh, Yumi said to Hana that if the baby missed her at night, she would call her. Because Yumi got very attached to the babies of Hana and Sadao, to the two children of Hana and Sadao. She further added that she was going to her own house and Hana knew where her house was. So Hannah smiled and thanked her for the offer, but to herself, she said that in case the baby cried, she would not call for Yumi. She made the breakfast and Sadao helped uh, with the children. Neither of them spoke of the servants beyond the fact that they were gone. But after Hana had taken morning food to the prisoner, she came back to Sadao. So uh, she made the break, uh, fake, uh, breakfast. The next morning, Hana prepared the breakfast and Sadao helped her by looking after the children. Neither of them talked regarding the servants. But after Hana served the morning food to the prisoner of war, she came to back to Sadao probably to talk something. Why is it we cannot see clearly what we ought to do? She asked him. Even the servants see more clearly than we do. Why are we different from other Japanese? So Hana uh, was very worried and she questioned that why they were not very clear about uh, what they ought to do. She added that uh, even their servants were very clear as compared to them. She said that why were they behaving differently from other Japanese people? Hana wanted to say that as Americans uh, were their uh, enemies, okay, they should not have treated their prisoner of war, that prisoner of war. And they should have let him die just like any other Japanese would have done, right? Sadao did not answer, but a little later he went into the room where the prisoner was and said brusquely, Today you may get up on your fo uh, feet. I want you to stay up only five minutes at a time. Tomorrow you may try it twice as long. It would be well that you get back your strength as quickly as possible. Right. So, uh, what did Sadao did? Sadao did not reply to Hana. But after some time, he went into the room where the prisoner of war was resting and spoke very fast, briskly. Okay, it means very fast. He said that uh, that day the man would get up and stand on his feet. Sadao wanted um, him to stand only for five minutes at a time. Um, Further, he added that the next day he could uh, try to stand for double the time, that is uh, 10 minutes. Sadao also said that uh, it would be good for everyone that uh, the man regain strength as soon as possible. Sadao hinted that they wanted to get rid of the American as early because he had been a cause of trouble for them. He saw the flicker of terror on the young man's face. That was still very pale. Okay, the boy murmured. Evidently, he, deter he was determined to say more. I feel I ought to thank you, doctor, for having saved my life. Right? Sadao saw that, the, that his words brought a hint of terror and scare on the face of the young boy. His face was still very pale and colorless because he was very weak. The boy spoke in a very low voice and said, okay. It appeared that he wanted to speak something more, but he just uh, said that he wanted to thank Sadao for saving his life. Don't thank me too early, Sadao said coldly. He saw the flicker of terror again in the boy's eyes. Terror as unmistakable as an animal's. The scars, was on his, the scars on his neck were crimson for a moment. Those scars, what were they? Sadao did not ask. Crimson, what is crimson? Crimson means, as you can see here, crimson means bright red color. Okay, so Sadao was very expressionless <clears throat> when he said that the boy did not need to thank him yet because Sadao knew that he is going to hand the boy, hand him the hand over the boy to the police. Okay, so what is the use of saying thank you? As he spoke, that he saw that uh, the hint of scare again appeared in the boy's eyes. The writer compares the boy's terrorized eyes to that of a scared animal. Mm -hmm. The injury marks on the neck of the boy uh, turned the bright red in color for a while. 
Sadao thought that what had caused that injury marks, but he did not ask the boy about them. Okay, okay. Uh, we have done till this much. Sadao did not ask, right? Uh, the second thing that has happened is given in the next paragraph. In this video, I have explained till only the first incident. In my next video, I will be explaining about the second incident. Okay, what happened? The second thing. Now, this second incident is also equally important, just like the first one so the first incident was what the servant the first in incident indicate the servants leaving the house okay the servants leaving the house and in the second incident we will see that how um, uh, an offi an officer or an official had come and how he uh, this uh, sadao was taken to the messenger uh, to this general's house okay so these two paragraph is very important and i want that the students should go through this paragraph very carefully okay so i hope students you all have understood till how much i have explained today right uh, the, in my next video i will start with the next paragraph okay till then thank you everyone if there is still any doubt please clarify thank you all